Hello, my name is Michael Burke. I am the founder of IPUI's Folding at Home Protein Research Team. And today I'm going to show you how to install Stanford's Folding at Home client onto your desktop. If you look down here in the bottom right corner, you can see I already have it installed and it's a little red symbol right here. If you double click it, it will bring up the display screen. Now once you have it installed, it will show you your username, uh, your team number, which is very important because if you don't put in the correct team number or if you have a typo, uh, you, your team will not get credited with the work that you've been doing. So say you wanted to donate to your work or to IPUI, uh, if you put in the wrong number, it will probably go to the, um, to the unknown uh, team, which really does, it helps the research, but it doesn't give your institution the credit. Um, over here, it shows the finished work uploads. Uh, the piece you're working on right now and if you take this right here and you go to the website, this number, you can look on their page and you can see uh, a more detailed description of exactly what you're working on and how it affects uh, their research and what, what diseases it, it might impact. Um, here you can see different frames completed. Uh, the work is done in frames. It's uh, on the microsecond scale, I believe, of a simulation. And it shows you how long it takes to do each frame. And then here it shows you how long it's going to take to finish the rest of the piece. So if you close out of that, I will go to the folding at home page. And from your home page, wherever that may be, just type in folding.stanford.edu. And this is their home page. They have download section, frequently asked questions. Um, different statistics, the science behind it if you're more interested in that, um, and a, a lot of other things. Um, the frequently asked questions section is particularly particularly useful if you're interested in uh, learning a little bit more about the security. I know a lot of people have concerns about that. Um, it is a very safe program, probably more secure than having uh, an email account actually. So if you're interested in this, this is the place to check it out. To download the client, go ahead and click on the big download button. And it brings you to the download page. Uh, to sign up, you need a username. So if you want to know if yours is taken, you can type it in. And they are case sensitive. So you can see here that mine is taken. But if I were to capitalize this M and search again, it just shows up that there's no match for this. So I can go ahead and use it. Click back a couple times to go to the back to the download page. And you can see here that there are a lot of different, um, there are a couple different clients available. Uh, this is a graphical client like I have. Um, what it does, it pops up as a screen saver. You can just pop it up and take a look at it anytime you want to. This option is a text only client. It, um, comes up with just some textual information about what you're doing, um, how long it's taking, etc. So to download, just click the Microsoft Windows button and click Save File and then go to your desktop. Double click the file and it opens automatically. It'll install itself. So click Next, and you can read the, the EULA, the license agreement. Um, here's all the README information. It has information on here about the newest version and all the, the difference that makes, in, makes from the, the last version. A lot of it is, is technical, so if you're so inclined, you can read about that. But if not, it probably doesn't mean anything to you either. Um, you can put your name in here. This is your username. And then this tells you that it'll be installing into a certain directory. So click Next. And it's going to ask permission to uh, make the program folder. So click Next. And then you can review right here. And then it will install. So since I already looked at the README, go ahead and run the application. I already have it running. You can only run um, one version or one. Uh, one client at a time. Unless you have a dual processor, I happen to have a, a dual processor. It's the the um, Core Duo that a lot of, that they've been advertising a lot. Intel has been really pushing that recently. 
Um, since it can only run on one at a time, it's going to go ahead and quit. It will go ahead and, and fix itself down here. And if you look at the status, you can see uh, what you're doing right now, uh, information about what's, uh, what's coming up in their research, statistics of your team, your statistics, and a log file that's uh, more for technical information. Uh, you can also have the option to pause your work. And this is really nice because um, if you use Photoshop or Dreamweaver or other high load programs, uh, it does take 40 to 50 percent of your process of time. So it will slow your computer down significantly if you're running a lot of programs. But go ahead and click on configure. And this brings you to the folding home control panel. Uh, you can have your username in here if you wanted to change it for whatever reason. Uh, your team number and this 53681 is IPY's team number. And this shows your connection. Um, if you have a proxy, if you have a firewall, you may need to, um, to play with this a little bit to get to work right. Usually though, it sets up automatically. Um, for this button, if you want to do more research or heavier duty research, uh, things that use up more of your processor time and take more days to complete. Click this. Um, as far as the display goes, this is just for when you bring up the graphical client like I did earlier. Uh, how fast you want the molecules to draw, how you want the visual visualization to, to occur. Um, and this is your option for a screensaver. If you only want it to run when you're not using your computer, so it's you know minimally an inconvenience. If you have an older computer or or one that doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of processing power to spare, uh, you can click on your screensaver and then run the core only when it's active. So this will reduce this will take longer. It may take you a few weeks to do one one workload, uh, but it, it will only run when your screensaver is running. And some other options down here as far as logo and the titles concerned. Um, for advanced, if you want to um, to do more research and and do more at one time. Um, this will give your client a higher priority, meaning that uh, it'll work harder, it'll take up more resources when your computer's figuring out what program gets what uh, resources. It puts it a step above a lot of other programs. Um, I have it set high because I um, my computer can take it and can handle it without slowing me down. Um, you can set your usage to only you know 50% if you want to. I have mine set all the way up. Um, there are other different things in here. Um, checkpointing frequency. Um, every so often, Folding at Home will take a snapshot of what it's doing so that if you shut down your computer or you turn it off or, uh, for instance, your computer crashes, uh, you only lost a few minutes of work instead of a half hour or, or full hour. Um, I have a laptop. If you have a laptop, this is a very useful button right here. Um, Having a high load program running on your computer drains more power. Um, if you have battery power, you'll notice that it maybe cuts off a half hour to 40 minutes off of your battery time. Um, and these are just other options down here. It's nothing too awfully important. So when you're done with that, click OK. And now you have a fully functioning version of Fooling at Home. If you have any questions about how to set this up or uh, different things like that re regarding folding at home or how to get involved, uh, you can email me at mjburk at iupui.edu. Thank you.